Tony DeBroom, who is 70, spends time with his family, including four great-grandchildren in the capital city of Majuro, as well as on their home atoll, Likiep. It was there as a child that Tony DeBroom held a front-row seat for 67 U.S. atmospheric nuclear weapons tests conducted on the northern Marshalls from 1946 to 1958. Portions of the islands remain intensely radioactive, and residents continue to suffer from adverse health effects as a result of direct and indirect exposure to fallout. So concurrent with his climate change appeal, Minister de Broom is calling for global nuclear disarmament. My country was the site of, of some of the most uh, horrific nuclear tests the world has ever known. The Republic of the Marshall Islands has filed a landmark lawsuit against the United States, Great Britain, Russia, China, France, India, Israel, Pakistan, and North Korea for allegedly breaching a 46-year-old nuclear nonproliferation treaty. Filed April 24th, both in U.S. Federal District Court in San Francisco and the International Court of Justice in The Hague, the lawsuit seeks declaratory and injunctive relief requiring the nine nuclear-armed states to comply with their treaty obligations. And although the nuclear weapons tests have ended on the Marshall Islands, the U.S. maintains a strategic military base on Kwajalein Atoll, which serves as a missile defense target range. We have people who cannot return to their homeland because of the atomic bomb testing. Now we have people who are displaced from their homelands because of the continued missile testing. Minister de Broom says while RMI-U.S. relations remain warm, his people languish in poverty with limited resources. Then there's the dearth, he says, of compensation for damages caused by 12 years of nuclear testing. $1.2 billion has been paid out to U.S. citizens exposed to Cold War nuclear test hazards, compared to $760 million in compensation to the Marshallese. Where is the fairness? Where is the justice here? We have outstanding uh, uh, adjudicated claims against the United States for damage to our property and damage to our health uh, that have still not been paid. The United States simply says, oh, the compact is a treaty, and that took care of that, and any further request is, is unacceptable. According to the Nonpartisan Federation of American Scientists, despite enormous reductions of nuclear arsenals, the U.S. and Russia stockpile more than 9,000 warheads. Israel is alleged to have several hundred nuclear weapons. 500 are in Western Europe. China has several hundred, with India and Pakistan packing 100 nuclear weapons each. Rough estimates, according to the FAS. And according to Roll Call, the U.S. over the next 30 years plans to spend more than a trillion dollars to modernize its nuclear arsenal. We have a mandate here to make sure that the world realizes that that whatever security they might derive from MAD or mutually assured uh, destruction, we contributed to one way or another. And, and, and we think that uh, eliminating nuclear weapons will open not just the eyes of the world to, to some, some sanity, but it will also uh, allow for resources to be dedicated to more worthwhile causes rather than to the maintenance of, of these weapons of mass destruction. The RMI's federal lawsuit names the Departments of Energy and Defense, the National Nuclear Security Administration, and President Barack Obama. In late May, Rose Gottmiller, U.S. State Department Undersecretary for Arms Control and International Security, paid a discreet visit to northwest Arkansas to confer with RMI President Christopher Loyak. Loyak was on hand celebrating RMI Independence Day in Springdale. In an email for this report, a State Department official responded that Goat Miller sought to express her concern to President Loyak that the United States government received no advanced notice of the nuclear arms lawsuit, but wished to highlight the U.S.'s strong commitment to disarmament. Unless an extension is requested, the defendants have 60 days from being served to respond. For Ozarks at Large, I'm Jacqueline Fro.